really simple, I just have a variable. Now, I think about variables, it's good to give them good names. The compiler doesn't care, Go doesn't care. But I care, right, as a person. I would like to know the name of the variable. And so a good name for a variable like this is name, right? Because I know what that is. Um, a not so great name is like x, because what is x? x could be anything, right? Uh, so you should name variables for what they are, okay? Um, and that actually, some programmers have a tendency to come up with crazy names for things. And, and <laughs> Bad, bad habit. So it's a good idea to choose good names. Um, and you know, if you're ever confused about well, what are good names in Go and stuff, it's good to look at other Go code to get an idea of the way people do things. Um, and, and Go has a sort of its own set of style conventions about that kind of stuff. And you can see, for example, here, uh, you know, Java is very verbose, but Go is not verbose. So um, the reason why they think this is a good name is because sure, it's shorter, but it's also very clear. I have a pretty good idea of what FMT means. And so um, it's not usually an issue, even though it's not, you know, most languages might do format, right? but we do FMT. Uh, but anyway, that, but it doesn't actually matter. The compiler doesn't care. It's just for our benefit to give a good name. Um, so this is one way to solve it. Another way, of course, would be to, to pull out the whole thing and uh, like this. And then we might call it SDR for string or something. Um, that would work too. Same idea. Uh, though one caution here, you can't do this. <laughs> because string's a keyword and you can't use it, okay? Um, because it already has a meaning. So that's the basic idea, really simple. Okay, so now we're gonna see how we can use variables to like actually solve a problem and not just for this silly thing. And we're gonna use a function to do that um, called scanf, okay? So what is scanf? Let's go look at it in the documentation. So we have format open over here, and here's scanf. Scanf scans text read from standard input, storing successive space-separated values into successive arguments as determined by the format. It returns the number of items successfully scanned. Okay, so your terminal has a standard out and a standard in. And standard out, when we do print line, sends text to, this, to that, okay? But we also have a standard in, and when you type things, that's coming from standard in, okay? And so we can read from that, to get a value. So wouldn't it be cool if we can make a, a program which instead of just printing out the name of a variable like uh, this, um, would read it in so the user could enter their name, right? Like wouldn't that be nice? Uh, so we can change this program to do that, okay? And we can do so using this scan line or scan f function, okay? We can do scan line too, it, it just uh, when you hit enter, you read it. Um, so let's see the scanf, the format, right? What is this format string? Uh, and that is described somewhere in here. Uh, I think way at the top. So here we go. All kinds of formatting things. So you basically percent in the character and describes the format. Uh, I think we just want a string, which is just. Uh, here, percent s. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to have var name string. Okay, so now we have a name that has no value, so it'll be the empty string, right? And then we're going to call the whoops. Let's see if this works. Okay. Okay. So takes in the format, and then we use a special ampersand character. We'll talk about that later, what that's doing. It's a pointer. Um, we'll cover those later. And then name. But basically the idea is this is going to fill the variable with the value entered by the user. Okay? And then we're going to print it out again. Okay? Everybody following? Um, so normally what you would do is you do something like this. Enter your name, then you'd scan it. So let's run that. And then you'd print back out again, okay? Okay, now we have an opportunity to write a real program. Okay, memory following this example? Like I said, we'll cover the, 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 the ampersand bit here Oops. Um, later. 
For now, just, just think of it as it makes it so I can fill the name. Okay? Uh, if I did, did this, it isn't going to work. It has to have that number. Um, okay, so the example program we can now move on to is there's actually three of them here. Uh, we want to convert miles to kilometers, Fahrenheit to Celsius, and pounds to kilograms. Okay? And to do that, we're going to need to. I guess I didn't show you math, so go can do basic math. <laughs> so if I have, uh, you know, I can do all the basic arithmetic. So I can say, right, I can do all those kinds of things. Oh, oops. You can use it as a calculator is all I'm, I'm saying, right? Um, and so you can do division, you can do addition, you can do subtraction, you can do whatever you need, right? And so I think we have enough to get started to write that program, right? Um, to write this program which converts miles into kilometers. So the basic structure is going to be something like uh, and this is just print, we don't want a new line after it. Actually, probably use something called or uh, uh, instead of we could use an integer, but it, it wouldn't be exact. Um, we'll talk about the types in a second, right? And then basically, what I want or uh, um, there's gonna be no offhand of conversion. Times four point nine. Okay. I just made that. Up. Let's, let's consult the Google. There we go. See, Google's great. Actually, we could just do this, but this is an example of where you'd use a constant. So this does nothing because we didn't pull anything in. So it did 0 times 1.60934, which is nothing, right? And so what we need to do is do a. What's, what 64 is uh, 64? It's a, it's a number that has a decimal place instead of just a number. What we call it? We don't just call it 4. We call it 64. No, it, we'll talk about the types in more detail, but uh, it's 64 bits. Um, so actually, we can't use string because now we're pulling in not a string, but a double or a float 64, so we have to use a different format, which we can get from here. Uh, this F. I think that should work. Let's see. So weird after doing JavaScript to not be putting semicolons in. Yeah. yeah, it takes some getting used to. There we go. Okay. So now it can calculate, uh, it can convert miles to kilometers. Okay. So the basic idea here is I just have this nice little prompt. I then fill in the number of miles. I then do basic arithmetic. And then I turn it out again. Everybody following this example? 